Hello friends, welcome to Homegrown Florida. When I first saw a green stalk vertical planter, I was amazed. <laughs> All the pictures showed it filled with beautiful, lush green plants, but that was not the experience I had when I first started planting in it. If you are struggling with your green stalk, you are in the right place. In this video, I'll be sharing my thoughts of the green stalk vertical planter and sharing my tips and tricks for using and caring for this green stalk. cover everything from what soil I used, how to start plants in it, watering, fertilizing, and some troubleshooting common problems. So first, let's talk about my thoughts on the green stock planter. Overall, I am pretty happy with the product, but I haven't always felt that way. The first time I set it up, I put in a bunch of strawberry plants and they all died, which was pretty much devastating. <laughs> Then I planted a bunch of seeds for greens and they all died as well. So my first two seasons were rough, but after a while I was able to figure it out. I do like the design of the planter with the self watering system, but there are some limitations with it. The actual growing tiers are very well made and durable. Probably my favorite feature of the green stock is its size. It is compact enough to fit in a small space like an apartment balcony, but large enough to hold a significant amount of soil and plants. This makes it ideal for people who have limited space, but it also makes a great addition to the garden for folks like me who do have a little bit more room. Now let's get into some of the tips for using the green stock. Let's talk about setup and soil first. The green stock came with specific instructions on the type of soil to use, which I followed to a T. <laughs> But I ended up switching this later on because I found that it dried up way too quickly. So the way I fill my green stock is with um, two thirds potting mix to each one of the tiers and then a third compost. And then I spread one really heaping cup of tomato tone into each of the levels. The potting mix normally doesn't have enough nutrients in it to feed the plants over an entire season. So adding the compost and the granulator fertilizer at the start usually helps with this. The compost also helped hold water a lot better than just the potting soil alone. When you're setting up your planter, I highly encourage you to fill it in place so you don't have to move it later. With all the soil that you're going to be adding, these things get super heavy. Also, I usually put the tier in place and then add my soil rather than trying to place the tier on it once it's already filled since it is going to weigh a lot. The other thing I recommend is to have some place really stable and level for the green stock to sit on like pavers or a concrete pad like I have here. Something else you may want to consider when setting it up is to possibly open up the watering holes a little. When I first put it in I didn't do this and they quickly clogged with a tiny bit of dirt and then the water wouldn't flow through the tiers so you may want to use something like a drill, a knife, or a screwdriver to widen up the drain holes a little bit. The last tip probably won't be popular but I have to say it. <laughs> Don't add all the tiers. I know. I usually keep mine at four tiers tall. If I were to add the fifth tier there is no way I would be able to fill the top with water since I'm a bit short, I'm five foot two. Also, it gets really wobbly when you have all five tiers, but four tiers seems to be more stable, at least for me. It is a waste of a tier, so your garden, your rules. The next step is to put your plants in. I've grown from seed and from transplants, and I had a lot better luck starting with transplants. The edge of the green stock, as well as all the other plants you have in here, can cast a lot of shade onto your seedlings, and that will end up making your seedlings leggy and die. If you really have your heart set on starting from seed directly in your green stock, fill the soil all the way to the top edge, not just to the fill line. Also, prune all the plants around it to keep shading from happening. You'll also need to water each pocket while the seeds are germinating because the center watering system really doesn't help until they get longer root systems. 
Transplants are much easier since they are tall enough to reach and clear the edge of the planter. And usually the roots are a couple inches down by the time you plant them. So the center watering uh, system should work better. Speaking of watering, let's discuss this piece because this is an interesting piece of the puzzle and in Florida where it gets very hot, this means the green stock soil dries up a lot faster than any other container I have ever used. In theory, you should just need to add water to the top tray up to the fill line and be done with it each week, but that is not what happens. <laughs> if I watered it that way, I would have to water this planter every two days, which is way too high maintenance for me. I'm gonna show you how I water my green stalk so that I only have to deal with it once a week. And I'm gonna warn you that this is controversial. <laughs> I say that because I have heard of other people who did something similar and they ended up drowning their plants. But my guess is those folks don't live in a super hot climate like me. So the first thing I do when I water them is to remove the watering tray. Then I dump water straight into the top tier that water will start to drain into the tiers underneath it pretty quickly. I wait until I start to see water coming from the drain tube before I move on to my next step, which is to add the water basin back to the top and I fill that one all the way up to the highest fill line. So I'm basically watering it twice within about 15 minutes. <laughs> this means it gets very deeply watered. I collect all the water that comes out the drain tube and I use it in any of the pockets where I'm starting seeds or have planted brand new transplants so they get a bit of extra water. I know it seems like a lot of water, <laughs> but this makes it so I only have to water it once a week sometimes even longer during our cooler season. I don't water again until I see some of my plants acting wilty or if I can feel that the soil is bone dry as far down as my finger can go into the pocket. If you think my strange watering method might help you with keeping your green stock watered, give me a thumbs up on this video. Fertilizing is something else you wanna pay attention to. Thankfully, since we added compost and fertilizer at the start of the season, I normally don't have to start fertilizing until I'm pretty far into the growing season. Once I see some yellowing of the leaves or if I feel like my plants are growing more slowly, then I will start fertilizing with fish fertilizer. I usually just add that into my water that I do weekly using the water basin, so the second round of watering, since I know that the center watering system will make sure that the water is distributed evenly, which means the fertilizer is distributed evenly. After the season's over, I'm setting it up for the next season. I grab a couple handfuls of compost and granulated fertilizer and I spread that on top of each tier. If I'm being especially lazy and I don't wanna take the whole planter apart, I just tuck that into the pockets when I plant my transplants. Then you're all set for the next season. After about a year or so, it's good practice to separate the entire planter to check the drain holes and to refresh the soil. I usually keep about half the existing soil and then I add new potting mix, compost, and granular fertilizer again. I haven't experimented with this yet, but I do wanna try composting in place to see if that keeps me from having to refresh the soil every year. Basically, that would mean just taking some food scraps or grass clippings and mixing it down into the tier at least about six inches down. If you have done that, head down to the comments and let me know how that worked for you. I'm really interested. Now let's talk troubleshooting. So we talked about the tricks for the direct seeding, fertilizing, and watering. But what about sun? <laughs> These planters have bases available that allow you to spin them to get even sun exposure. Let me save you some money. Don't buy these. <laughs> yes, they do work and they do spin very easily, but 
there is no way that I'm going to remember to spin this thing every day or every other day. Your best bet is to find a place in your yard that gets a full 360 degree sun. For me, and probably for many of you, this is going to be a challenge because these planters need to be put on something stable, which normally is a place near your house. Your house is gonna cast a shadow on some parts of the planter, so just be aware that you're probably going to have some pockets that don't get used. I try to reduce this the best way I can by putting very tall transplants in these pockets, the ones in the back, because usually that means they can reach for the light a lot better than smaller transplants. Another thing I wanted to talk about with these green stalks is probably one of the most important, which is what types of plants do best in these planters. I've grown pretty much everything in here, flowers, herbs, greens, fruiting plants, root crops, strawberries. I have not had success with strawberries. My best guess is that they just don't do well with the inconsistent watering that I give this planter. Root crops tend to be small in size, so I usually just grow them in my beds. Fruiting crops do okay, but once again, I much prefer them in the beds where the yield is much bigger, but they are totally possible in here. The three plants that I have had amazing results in the green stalks is flowers, herbs, and greens. I also use my green stalks as kind of an experimental area for brand new plants. So back here, I'm trying borage and marshmallow. <laughs> Before I grow them in the bed, just to get used to them and their habits. With all this in mind, if you are planning on just growing flowers, herbs, and greens, like me, save yourself a little bit of money and get the leaf instead of the original. The leaf has shorter tiers, so it's easier to move around and you probably could use all five tiers without it being so wobbly, like the original. Also, it costs about $20 less. <laughs> if you're interested in getting one of these green stock vertical planters for your garden, I'll add a link into the description below and I'll pin it to the comments and that link will get you $10 off your purchase, so make sure to check that out. So there you have it, the good, the bad, and the ugly of the green stock vertical planter. <laughs> Even with some of its challenges, it is still the best one I have found, and its pros do outweigh the cons, at least for me. Thanks for hanging out with me in the garden today. I hope you found this video helpful. If you wanna watch a couple more of my videos, I'll pop them up right here, and you can check those out between now and my next upload. Happy gardening, guys.